up the beanstalk. All right, Conan is tapped out now, so that's good for us. But how much value back are they gonna get? Will it be enough to stop us? Okay, is that it? I think we got them. We then create another crime, and we will throw away Fable the Mirror Breaker. So we put this down. We just go swinging here, and there you go, everybody. <laughs>Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, we are going to be playing in the Explorer format with a card that you all voted on to be seen be made into a full deck. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead, let's take our new card from Thunder Junction, Gisa. Let's go ahead, let's make a bunch of zombie tokens, let's commit some crimes along the way, and let's raise some hell. That's a clean burning hell, I tell you what! <laughs> Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our Hellraiser deck today is going to be a mono black deck that is having an average mana curve of about 2.2. We're looking at about 12 creatures, 4 instants, 14 sorceries, 8 enchantments, and 22 lands. The overall focus of the deck is just trying to do one of two things. All we just want to do is just make a bunch of zombies, but thankfully our zombies are also zombie rogues, so we can take advantage of the outlaw ability that was introduced in Thunder Junction. How is that going to work with what we're trying to do today? Good question. Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's go ahead now. Let's talk about again how we're going to pull this off. So starting in the one drop slot with our creatures we just mentioned, we have Forsaken Miner and we have Tiny Bones, the pickpocket. So Forsaken Miner here is a really cute, simple little card. Yes, it can't block, but is a one mana 2-2 two -two that could do some decent damage in the early game. Anytime we commit a crime, however, we can pay one black mana. And if we do, we can bring it back from the graveyard to the battlefield. The other main card and one of our biggest highlights for the deck is also going to be Tiny Bones, the pickpocket. So let's talk about this card for just a second here. It's a legendary skeleton rogue 1-1 one, one for one black mana with death touch, where it reads, whenever Tiny Bones deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard, and mana of any type can be spent to cast the spell. Woo! This is a sweet little mythic, and definitely you can then sometimes steal some really key cards, as long as, of course, you can put some stuff into the yard. We tend to be in a format where people are very graveyard happy, so we could take advantage of that with Tiny Bones and start stealing some of their key cards. The only other actual creature in the deck is going to be Gisa the Hellraiser herself. So before we go over the support options for her, let's go ahead and talk about her specifically. Gisa the Hellraiser is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four human warlock legendary creature that has ward 2 and you have to pay 2 life. It gives skeletons and zombies you control plus 1 plus 1 and has menace. Whenever you commit a crime, you create 2 tapped 2-2 two, two blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens. This ability, however, only triggers once each turn. Even though this card only can trigger that ability once each turn, that's more than enough to just make a giant army maybe in a turn and a half and overwhelm our opponent to get our win. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead, let's continue on and show you the support pieces that are going to help us commit a bunch of crimes to then get the ton of value we definitely need to get out of this deck. So only two copies of it, but we have Annihilating Glare. The simple little sorcery just allows us to just take care of creatures and planeswalkers as long as we pay the appropriate costs. We also have Duress here, again just helps us take a peek at what our opponent's trying to do, commits a crime of course because it is targeting our opponent, and then also we can pick off key cards that maybe Tiny Bones can then take advantage of a little bit later in the match. We also are going to have in the 2 drops slot here, Collective Brutality, I really like how this card works perfectly well for this deck. Granted, even if you escalate it by discarding cards, you won't get additional value out of it with Gisa, so keep that in mind again, but there are going to be some moments where you're going to have to then utilize all of its abilities in order to get the best value out of the card. Since we are going to be making a ton of tokens, and we also we have a couple ways of bringing some of our creatures back, like Forsaken Miner, we're going to use Deadly Dispute here to help us with some ramp and card draw. We have Vampire's Kiss here. Technically, it's not ramp, but it is kind of also helping us with the life gain and drain ability by giving us some blood tokens to help filter through our deck if we have extra copies of our legendaries. Plus, you can also take advantage of those blood tokens by sacrificing them to, say, Deadly Dispute and Annihilating Glare. And then finally, in the 3 drop slot, we have a little bit of a cool catch-all option here, Elspeth's Nightmare. So this is an awesome little enchantment saga that also will help us commit crimes technically over the course of three turns because remember each one of its abilities will target our opponent first ability allows us to then destroy a target creature with a power two or less the second ability allows us to show off their hand and we get to discard a card from their hand and then finally we get the target their graveyard and exile everything so really awesome for us and perfect for the deck and then finally, as I mentioned earlier, if for some reason we have to gum up the board but we kiss, can't swing in our opponent, we will also take advantage of Rakish Crew here by allowing us to then life gain and drain whenever an outlaw we control dies. 
Of course, because we utilized all of our rares and mythics for the main deck, for our lands, it's going to be as simple as we can. Just 21 swamps and a single copy of Witch's Cottage, maybe to bring back either an extra Gisa or a Tiny Bones in a pinch. As far as your sideboard is concerned, if you do want to take this into best of three, your best options again are going to be focused around ensuring that you need to commit crimes to get the most value out of Gisa. That's why we're going to be utilizing Tormod's Crypt this time instead of Soul Guide Lantern because this will target an opponent, and also it just gets rid of their graveyard for free. We also are going to take advantage of another copy of Annihilating Glare. If you need something at instant speed, however, we also have Fatal Pushes here in the sideboard. Agonizing Remorse just kind of helps reinforce the duress game plan if you just want to focus more on discarding and exiling cards from their hand. Speaking of extra exile, we also have a single copy of Blot out here, which will allow us to target a creature or Planeswalker and opponent controls with the greatest mana value among creatures and Planeswalkers they control. Since I did mention again, we're also going to be targeting and also we could take advantage of Discard. You can also put in some copies of Davriel here, which is really great. And also it's a slow way of pinging out your opponent to then hopefully just close out the game a little easier. For your pseudo Wrath in the deck, you also will have copies of Glistening Deluge here. It will give all of creatures minus one and minus one until end of turn, which may seem detrimental to us. But remember, if we have a Rakish crew out, that actually will help us out a little bit here by pinging our opponent down. Not to mention also it gets an extra buff if we have to face off against bigger green and white decks out there, which is great for us because this will hose again many of the mono green decks out there and also will take care of Convoke decks very quickly out of nowhere. And to round out the rest of your sideboard here, a single copy of Death Priest of Merkel here, this four mana Tiefling Cleric. Again, it's not going to be an outlaw per se, but it will give a buff to all of our creatures. So it's a great way to kind of give us a Lord effect. And also it can help us kind of reinforce our army by allowing us to then pay one to make more skeleton creature tokens as long as a creature died the turn we can take advantage of the ability but with that out of the way the simple question we just need to ask as always is how well is this gonna deck gonna be able to handle can it actually pull off a bunch of tokens by committing a bunch of crimes against our opponents good question well there's only one way to find out so join me once again as we take this deck into explorer to see how well the deck does but before we continue if you do like any of the content that i do please like follow and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay booster pack openings deck decks and so much more all right my fiery friends here we go can we get gisa out can we raise some hell and commit crimes well the good news is we do have gisa and we do have a rakish crew and a way to then draw into some more action so we're going to keep this hopefully we'll be able to get some more lands and then hopefully we'll be able to finish off our opponent quick here we just need to build up our army and we will should be in a good spot Play Tiny Bones just to get this started. Okay, opponent, what are you playing? All right, tap land, stomping grounds. Just go swinging for now. Down to 19. Okay, commercial district. They surveil. If they do put a non-land permanent, we may be able to cast it, and that could help us get some stuff going. All right. We will play Rakish Crew. Make a token. Swing. Down to 18. Okay, so the good news now is we do have part of our game plan ready to go. All we just need to do is just eventually just put down Gisa. Oh. Well, this stinks. That's very annoying. But again, not the worst. Collective brutality. Let's see what our opponent is trying to do. Big score. We need to slow down the ramp. If we can get at least one more. Okay, we didn't quite get what we want, but we commit a crime here. Make some tokens. Pass. Okay, so game plan right now is we can have a deadly dispute and then we can do our ramp, which is great. Throw spiral. Opponent draws a card. Put down the mountain. Deadly dispute on our end. Sack a token. Draw two cards. Make a treasure. Okay, so with what we have. We have enough for Gisa, but I need to make sure that their hand is completely stripped. Okay. Let's get a peek at their hand. As long as they have at least one removal that we can at least get rid of, we should be fine. Okay, throw away if all takes, right? And we will pass. Okay, so game plan right now is we can Deadly Dispute at the end of their turn, make another treasure, a cycle. Okay, I assume our opponent is going to try to pull off some kind of combo here. Alright, tap land. What is your last card, opponent? That is what I would like to know. But until then, attack the blood token. Draw two cards. Make another treasure. Okay, so. Giza coming down. Whew, okay, she does resolve. Where do we go from here? I do want to see what our opponent is trying to do, so let's get a peek again at their hand. 
And finally, raising some health, make some tokens. Wow, they did have an answer. Wow. That is so unfortunate for us. That's fine, that's fine. We throw away at least one of their options here. So they actually did have, of all things, one actual thing to respond to us, which is really frustrating. So we draw a new hand. Okay, not quite what we wanted here at all. Why is it always whenever we play these matches, our opponent has just the right answer for our decks? In any case, all right, so Swamp, Elspeth's Nightmare. We at least still have two tokens, so that's good for us. We'll collect a Brutality, because we now have enough lands. So, what we're going to do now is just start doing some targeting. We'll throw away one Swamp. What do you have, opponent, that gets you your thing? All right, throw away the Alred's Epiphany. Down to eight. They have another one, which is annoying, but at least dealing with one of them slows them down just a smidge. Ill-timed Explosion. So that means they get rid of our creatures, which is, again, annoying. But we're going to drain them out just a smidge here. They're down to 7, down to 6. We're up to 26. Mind Splice Apparatus. All right. Elsa's Might Nerve goes off again. Get rid of the other Alrin's Epiphany. And we can get rid of their other final one here, so... <laughs> All right. Throw away a Swamp. Throw away the other Alrin's Epiphany. Drain them out with Vampire's Kiss. Oh my goodness, we actually got them right here. Drain them out, everybody. Woo! Again, we didn't really quite do what we wanted to do, but I'll take that win. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Let's go ahead, let's see if we can raise some hell and commit some crimes with our Gisa deck. So, we do have her hand, which is great for us, but we just need to get a couple more lands, and we should be fine. I think we should be able to get away with what we got here, though. So, with that, we we'll probably won't get any value out of the Witch's Cottage. So with that, I guess we'll just put it down. It is tempting to keep it, but we might want it on the turn. We don't want it un We want it tapped. So, oh, well, now I feel dumb because they just gave me another land. It's okay. It's fine, everybody. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay. So with that, Vampire's Kiss. Let's create some tokens. So we can use these later on with Deadly Dispute to then start drawing into more action and then pseudo ramp us. Oh, our opponent is getting ready with Yorion. Interesting. Okay, well, that is a choice our opponent can do. Let's bring out Rackish Crew. Make a token. So we have a Mercenary ready to go. Up the heat stock. Okay, they are definitely going to try to start doing the ramp and ramp. I have to throw away a card. What did they get? Renegade Rallier. All right. Should we be worried about that? I guess we'll find out. So with that, we will pass. Another Triland. We will do some sacking. Sack a token. Draw a card. Or two. Okay. Forsaken Miners are actually not too bad. These can help us out later on if we do end up getting stalled out with trying to use Gisa. So with that, bring her online. And I guess we'll just do this now. We'll just bring in one Forsaken Miner. It's a 3-3 three, three with Menace, which is not too shabby. But I'm expecting our opponent is probably going to try to blow us up in just a moment here, which is what I'm scared about. If they don't blow us up, then we have a shot. Fire's Invention. Oh dear. I hate this card so much. I don't like anything that cheats out other things for free. Even though we have played combo decks that kind of cheat stuff, I'm really, honestly, not a fan of it at all. I, but maybe it's because I'm also an old school kind of player. Well, we got Wrath partially, but Gisa did survive, which is great for us. So... This is where the fun begins. So with that, duress. Let's take a peek at what our opponent's trying to do here. This allows us to bring back our miner. And then we get to throw away something they don't like. Okay, so Ichthymatic in our carnation. Whew, that was close. We wanted that out of the way. Swamp down. And how do we do this here? So with that, just swinging with Giza. Down to 10. And I guess we'll just put the miner down now. Okay. If nothing else, even if they try to say do Skyclave Apparition on us, that won't help that won't help them that much. Because we can start committing crimes with Elspeth's Nightmare and Vampire's Kiss. They draw a card. Oath of Kaya. I'm guessing a Forsaken Miner is gonna get destroyed right now. Okay, they go after the token. 
This is fine. We still get to ping him a little bit, so we're not down, down. Tiny bones. Hmm. How do we do this? I think Elspeth's Nightmare. Which doesn't get a chance to do much of anything. Vampire's Kiss. This helps us commit a crime. <laughs> Can't believe crime committing a crime is actually nice for us. But in any case. Alright, so with that. Go swinging with our creatures here. And down to one. Alright, opponent. Well, you've got one turn here to turn it all around. Can you do it? Even if they blow up the board, we will also be able to drain them out. Omen of the Seas. Alright. Alright, opponent. This is it. Can you beat our crime spree? They make some life. Gain a land. They're looking at Gisa here. Do not remove it, opponents. We totally want to keep her at least alive a little bit longer. Just at least one more turn. Just one more turn. Yorion. Okay. Alright, they're going to get a lot of value back here. But is it enough to stop us? They blink away a ton of things. Another Omen of the Sea. So this will allow them now to cast some things here. Up the Beanstalk. Alright. Opponent is tapped out now. So that's good for us. But how much value back are they going to get? Will it be enough to stop us? So they ping. Take out a token. They go back up to 10. We drain them both for 1. So that does slowly keep us within range. Let's do some scrying. They draw a card. Another card. Okay, is that it? I think we got them. We then create another crime. And we will throw away Fable the Mirror Breaker. So we put this down. We just go swinging here. And there you go, everybody. <laughs> we beat Yorion. Whew. That pile is always a dirty pile to play against. But some way, somehow, Budget Gisa got the job done. Committing crimes was so worth it for us. Oh man, I love this deck. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Let's go ahead and see if we can raise some hell and get Gisa on the battlefield to make a bunch of zombies. So we do have some lands. We do have a way of getting some card draw and some removal. So let's keep this hand and hopefully we might be able to get there with what we got. All right, so it goes in. Play with fire, okay. Uh, opponent. So we got Deadly Dispute, which is great. Put down the Swamp, pass the turn. Okay, so game plan right now is we're just going to try to ramp for days, and hopefully we maybe just blow up some creatures along the way. Ooh, Dread Horde Volcanus. A little scary. Don't worry, we can deal with that. So in the meantime, though, let's Vampire's Kiss. Make some tokens. Pass the turn. Going to be copying some spells. Mountain. Get to Lava Runner. Oh, wow, they're playing it old school. So it's like I'm back in standard from, like, 2019. Wizards Lightning. Alright, turns on their creatures. So, they're going to try to cast now play with fire, I guess. Yep. Although, awkwardly enough, they just turned off their get to Lava Runner's power. So, uh, I guess that's totally fine with us. Down to 13. Okay, so with that, put down a Swamp. We need to start blowing stuff up, so... Elspeth's Nightmare, taking out Dreadhard Arcanist. Got that off the field. Play with fire. Down to 11. They scry. Turn back on. Get to Lava Runner. We're down to 9. Okay, we're getting a little close to the end here, but don't worry, everybody. We do have a way of getting some stuff down. Okay, Act of Treason. Out of the way. Whew. Okay, Deadly Dispute. Sacrifice a token. Draw some cards. Witch's Oven. Not really helpful for now, but I guess it still counts as an untapped land. We will then play Collective Brutality. And we will ping our opponent here. Throw away one Rackish crew. All right, back up to 11, down to 16. Phew, okay, we're stabilizing against Mono Red, which is great. But why are people playing Hazret now? Is this 2017 again? I don't know, I haven't seen anybody play this card forever. But that's kind of cute, at least. I'm going to ping this back down to 9. And it's our turn. Okay, so. We exile their graveyard. Okay, with that, how do we do this here? So, how do we get out of this? Okay. Raggish crew. Make a token. And we will pass the turn here. Throw it. Okay, well they go swinging, that's fine. We can take out their Pyromancer. 
So they lose their creature. We were able to trade up there, which is great for us. We will then play Deadly Dispute. Crack the treasure. Sack the token. Draw some more cards. Make another one. Ooh, okay. So we've got Gisa on board now. So with that, we came here to do this. So that's why we're doing it now. Gisa coming down. Okay, now we just start committing crimes, and we should be in business. Oh, man. Okay, this is it, everybody. Time to get a little dirty out here. So with that, let us check out what our opponent has. Commit a crime. Make some tokens. Get a little peeky peek. What do you got, opponent? What do you got? Come on, let me see. Ooh, okay, okay. So with this, I think we just get rid of Reckless Rage. So that protects Kisa. And we will play Forsaken Miner. Okay. Go swinging. Down to 11. I think it may seem a little weird to do this, but we're going to put down Elspeth's Nightmare. The, you're going to have to hear me out on this one. This at least will get rid of their graveyard, which will turn off Fiery Impulse. But otherwise, opponent, you have one turn. Oh, never mind. They already gave up right now. So, yes, we beat them. Whew. Wow. We were able to stabilize there very quickly. So, there you go, everybody. That's the deck. Man, this is an amazing deck. Oh, I love this deck so much. And there you have it, everybody. So that was our Let's Raise Hell deck for you here in Explorer. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? To be perfectly honest with you, I'm actually really satisfied with how the deck turned out. It was a little bit janky here and there, and Giza's a little slow to pull out. But if you do manage to get her to stick on the battlefield, she does a lot of damage for just very little investment of just targeting creatures to then gain a ton of zombies. In all honesty, you probably don't even have to do that much to make an initial investment to make this deck even stronger. But if you stuck around this far in the video, you, of course, are my true fire rate friends, and as always, we'll be able to show you how you can upgrade this deck to make it even more powerful than it currently is. Now, as far as those upgrades are concerned, one of the best advantages of this deck is you actually don't need to do that much to make it much more powerful than it currently is. Realistically, I think you can actually get away with just upgrading the mana base, and you would be perfectly fine. But if you do want to take it a step further than that, we can just get rid of some of our cheaper creatures, such as what we mentioned, our miner. We can then add in, instead, gutter bones. So it's a skeleton warrior, so it's not technically an outlaw, but at least it can block, and it still is only one mana. Not to mention, also, it's a lot easier to bring it back, although it is a little more costly to bring Bring it back but most often than not you could trigger it off very quickly your other upgrade of course is getting rid of the duress and is always putting in the one and only thought see so this is pretty much an auto include if you're willing to again spend the rares to get that card as far as the two drop slot nothing we really need to change here keep your collective brutalities keep your deadly disputes you're definitely going to want those and of course keep your vampire's kiss so that way you can trigger off things like gutter bones still much more easier your only other change is not necessarily an upgrade, but it's going to be a lateral change since we are focusing less on the actual outlaw part with gutter bones as an example. And also we actually have a copy of the bat god itself at Colossus, the deepest betrayal. So for these cards, we're then going to put in instead Bastion of Remembrance to then take advantage of the fact that this will trigger off versus any creature we control that dies versus just outlaws. Those upgrades that I mentioned to the land base are pretty much going to be trimming down some of the swamps so that we can put in copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, a Castle Lockwain, and a Cabal Stronghold just to get a little bit more mana and ramp going and ensuring that you can then cast what you need on time. The sideboard upgrades, again, not anything super crazy. You can pretty much keep everything as is, but for those small little upgrades we're going to be utilizing, we're going to add in, again, instead of Davriel, we're going to put in Liliana of the Veil. And the reason why, of course, is that secondary ability she has where she ticks down does trigger the uh, crime ability, so this will help us out a little bit there. Your Wrath upgrade is going to be Crippling Fear if you want to then change that around, but again, it's not absolutely necessary. This is mostly just something to consider. And the only other upgrade I would give is consider the other extra copy of Gisa right here, Glorious Resurrector. So this is going to be something that actually you could consider. Again, it's not a requirement, but it also allows us to take advantage of our opponent's graveyard as we keep milling stuff and discarding stuff into their graveyard to then take advantage of later on. And with that all out of the way, here are my final odds that I just want to give on the deck. This is definitely a fun deck, and I actually really, really like what Geese is trying to do here. Is she doing anything unique or revolutionary? Not exactly. She's going to do her usual thing, which is make zombies, and then just go super big with what she has. However, with what we've had to work with, it's surprisingly a highly synergistic deck, and it's a lot of fun when it does go off. So, to put it another way, for those of you that are interested, if you are a fan of Gisa, if you are a fan of making tokens, if you're a fan of grinding, 
grinding out your wins for extra value by sacrificing creatures, getting a ton of extra cards out of it, maybe again just committing crimes against your opponent to get more triggers off, definitely give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you begin raising hell by committing crimes and raising a zombie army out of nowhere to overwhelm your opponent and just smash through to get your victory, you'll have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at what this deck is capable of, and I assure you, you will not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!